Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. And, you know, plotting covert activity on government emails would, would just be silly. We will have that story in just a few moments. But, James, you and I were discussing a way to sort of disrupt the pattern. And every episode of New World Next Week for 2015 so far, we've included good news stories. But we've always had them at the end of the episode. So we want to put the good news right up front and center on this episode 222 of New World Next Week. Play the game. Reclaim your brain. Don't fallus me, bro. Dot com teaches logical fallacies. The game, Don't Fallus Me, Bro, or you can find it at don'tfallus.me, created by our friend Morgan Lesko of Wiki World Order. He notes this collaborative logic training game aims to improve critical thinking and aid in the revival of the trivium method of learning. So you can explore, participate, support independent and constructive sources of news, research, and entertainment. And James, I was just actually, I, I just found out about this site, and it's a great bit of fun. I spent the previous half hour kind of playing around on it and messaged Morgan about the creation of this website, and he noted actually that it's, that it's still in beta. They're already working on updates for, uh, for a redesign, and noted much like wikis and open source material, the more people get involved and the more people add their own examples, and we'll get into it here in just a second, like anything, the, the better it's going to be because more people are involved. So, James, I'm going to put you on the spot and make you play a little round of Don't Fallus Me Bro. So, here we go. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. What example of a fallacious argument is that? Is that an ad hominem? Slippery slope, appeal to spite, false dilemma, or peer pressure? James? I'm going to go with false dilemma. You are correct, my friend. Great yeah. job. You are using your critical thinking skills. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists is a false dilemma because I might not be with either of you. And each explanation will show you. It's, it's a really great resource, James. Or you might be the terrorist. So, yeah, <laughs> in the case of Bush, yeah, no, excellent resource. This is a great idea and I, I, just one of those wonderful ideas that people come up with that can help to spread some of this uh, this learning and information in a, in a fun and engaging way. And a, again, as you said, um, the more people who participate in this and send in their own examples, uh, the better the, the site will be. So please do check it out. Don't, don't me. Like you, I just found it myself today. So it's uh, I'm just playing around and uh, trying some of the example questions. And I think it's a great way to, to sharpen your uh, critical thinking skills. And let's put it in the perspective that it deserves to be put in. Just because an argument is fallacious does not mean its conclusion is either correct or incorrect. It doesn't say anything about that. It just says that we can't believe an argument uh, that is fallacious on the basis of that argument alone. So um, so let's, uh, let's sharpen up our critical thinking skills and see if we can put it to some use. And I love examples like that one that you just cited because uh, they are real world examples that we have all heard and uh, these are big, glaring, fallacious arguments that have been shoved in our face for the last uh, decade or century or whatever. And uh, it's time to, to start deconstructing them. And uh, this is a fun way to do it. So, James, as we've been discussing good news, not only through 2015, but in months and years past here on New World Next Week, we sort of created the new hashtag good news next week. And folks use that to submit story ideas. So a couple of other good news we want to make note of as we've not been here for the last two weeks Marijuana sniffing dogs out in Oregon as marijuana legalization kicks in. There's a dramatic drop in law enforcement interest, at least in Michigan. New glasses make you invisible to facial recognition software. And independents now outnumber both Democrats and Republicans in 44 out of 50 states. So those are a little bit of good news notes. And I think that last one about independents and the Democans leads us into our second story this week, and that's Hillary's email gate could expose the Clinton Foundation. Follow the money. That's the apocryphal phrase attributed to Watergate, whistleblower, deep throat. And that explains why the biggest threat to Hillary Rodham Clinton's presidential dreams is not her emails. It's the Clinton Foundation. That's where the money is, the corporate money, the foreign money, the gobs of money sloshing around in vanity charities that could actually be renamed Clinton Conflicts of Interest Foundation. So what about the emails? Hillary's secret communications cache is a bombshell deserving of full disclosure because of her assault 
on government transparency and electronic security. But its greatest relevancy is what the emails might reveal about any nexus between Clinton's work at state and donations to the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation from U.S. corporations and foreign nations. So under fire, old Billy Boy said his namesake charity has, quote, done a lot more good than harm, which is hardly a ringing endorsement. One of his longest-serving advisors, a person who had worked directly for the foundation, told the National Journal, the long-time whispers of pay-to-play are going to become shouts. That person, a Clinton loyalist and credible source, has no evidence of wrongdoing, but said the media's suspicions are warranted. The emails are a related but secondary scandal. Follow the foundation money. So, James, that's something, again, as we're talking about the lost tools of learning and our friends Morgan Lesko and our friends Kevin Cole and all the folks at Tragedy and Hope, the foundations are really where you can dig in and see where a lot of the groundwork has been laid and it lays bare, I think, the phony left-right paradigm, James. This has always been one of the real Achilles' heel in the uh, in Hillary Clinton's presidential hopes, which is this uh, this foundation, obviously, that Bill kicked off after uh, leaving office, that has so far garnered millions upon millions of dollars in speaking fees and donations and all of this to uh, Bill and Hillary. And of course, they have amassed quite a fortune since leaving office. Surprise, surprise. Uh, uh, so uh, this has always been a political soft spot for them because. This is one of those things that plays into the left-right game that unfortunately dictates a lot of uh, what's going on on the on the chessboard. So, so yes, I mean, it is going to be shunted off into a Republican versus Democrat thing. And as I think you're uh, going to note in one of the related follow-ups, the Republicans are equally as guilty as this. So that isn't really the point. But again, in any universe approximating actual political reality, this would be something that would scuttle Hillary's chances at getting the, the, uh, the presidency. I mean, what what she did with the emails is ridiculous. It is flagrantly illegal. There's, I mean, it's black and white. There's no two ways about it. What she did was illegal. She herself deleted a 32,000 emails saying, oh, they were personal emails. Trust me. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just absolute insanity. Um, of course, we know that <laughs> there's a lot of different factors that go into this. And if anyone actually wants those deleted emails, just go to the NSA because uh, they have them all uh, sitting there on their, their servers. So <laughs> I guess that's not really the point. But again, there's so many different ways to it that Hillary could be attacked in this campaign. Not only the emails, not only the foundation, but also Bill and the fact that he is equally accused of the same things that Bill Cosby has been accused of that have completely scuttled Bill Cosby's career, namely rape. Yes, Bill Clinton has been actually sued for rape and settled out of court in the exact same way Bill Cosby did, but for some reason you don't hear about that when it comes to Bill Clinton. Hmm, I wonder why. So, um, again, I mean, this is going to be played into a left-right political game, and I imagine Hillary has a couple of defenses. One is going to be, oh, it's just the Republicans trying to attack me because I'm a Democrat. The other is, oh, it's just misogynists trying to attack me because I'm a woman. And and that card has already been pulled by some of Hillary's supporters. So we're going to see a lot more of that as her campaign continues to, uh, to shape up. And uh, I'm not looking forward to any of this. I don't want to cover any of this because it is so just depressing to see this kind of political shenanigan garbage uh, continuing to play out. But it is important that we press this home for the, uh, the the people still locked in that matrix to at least get them to start questioning, hey, you know, how come Bill and Hillary uh, have been using their, their political connections and political power to garner donations for their, their foundation? And the best defense they can come up with is, it's done a lot more good than harm, honest. Oh, it's just pathetic, disgusting. Please check out my podcast on the Clintons to find out more of the dirt that's hiding in their closet. And let's hope that that this scuttles any chance Hillary has for becoming president. So, James, yes, as you referenced, we will include the flashback link to the Bush White House email controversy from 2007. That's where it was discovered that, yes, indeed, they were running their own private email server, and it all came out after they had fired attorney generals. If that may ring some sort of bell for folks back, you know, back in 2007. Another note to make, James, just as this as so much of it does play out on the sort of phony media stage and, and we sort of act out these these dramas and things. I think sometimes it's it's really interesting on an esoteric level how some of these things are presented and shown. And in a lot of ways you can look at it and go, well, I don't I don't care what they say. I want to look at what they do. So the really interesting thing when Hillary finally addressed the email gate allegations on Tuesday, she did it at the United Nations, which one you should note, of course, is Rockefeller land that used to be slaughterhouse. So it is literally bloody land. 
And she comes out and gives this crazy press conference with a hundred reporters, and she does it in front of Picasso's famous painting, Guernica, the one that depicts the fascist bombing of the Basque village during the Spanish Civil War. Really strange, I think, interesting kind of scenes being played out for us on on a lot of different levels there, James. If you don't have any other comments on that, we'll move along to our third and final story this week as we say, hello, Barbie. Goodbye, privacy, as creepy new doll spies on your child. And we've got links to Christian Science Monitor going into this story, but we'll just take it from USA Today. High-tech talking Barbie a bad idea. Barbie the doll is about to become Barbie the techno-conversationalists. And one livid consumer advocacy group says, for the sake of the kids, Mattel must quash the new toy before it hits the shelves for the holidays. Hello Barbie is a $74.99 Wi-Fi connected doll that uses a microphone embedded in Barbie's belt buckle to record children's voices and transmit them to cloud servers where they'll be stored for up to two years. Mattel's tech partner, Toy Talk, leverages speech recognition with pre-programmed responses to keywords or phrases so that kids can feel like Barbie is responding to them. Now, comments aside of lonely kids with no family or parents paying attention to them. They're begging for a doll to act like it's interacting with them. But Mattel says it's simply doing what kids have been asking it to do for years. Quote, the number one request we receive from girls globally is to have a conversation with Barbie. And with Hello Barbie, we're making that request a reality, says Stephanie Coda, Mattel's senior vice president of Global Blah Blah. What's more, for kids to use the techno doll, parents must sign on and ultimately will have access to their kids' recorded conversations, we swear. But Wednesday, officials at Campaign for a Commercial-Free Childhood, the aforementioned advocacy group, posted a petition on their site demanding that Mattel abandon the project. Quote, this is really about Mattel eavesdropping on a child's heart and soul and the most intimate things about their lives, said Susan Lynn, executive director of the group. The real problem, says Lynn, is that Mattel will now have the ability to listen in on kids at play, saying, quote, it's corporate surveillance in the home and exploitation where kids are most vulnerable around creative play, end quote. Now, James, I could go into entire Simpsons episodes that have been done about this, where evil toy companies use, you know, fake schools and toys that surveil them to sell things back to them could go into any of these numbers of, of directions. You and I have talked about the elf on the shelf, this sort of new neo-holiday tradition where an elf spies on your children through a video camera, and it's all fun and games. But there was also a story, James, and I thought you and I covered it here on New World Next Week, but I found it in my own Media Monarchy archives, and it goes back to December of 2010. Barbie Video Girl in FBI crosshairs. There was a doll, and it was around the same amount of money. It had a great camera. It actually had a camera that almost rivaled some of the other sort of prosumer Canon 7Ds and some of these other kind of mid to high level in cameras. But back in 2010, the feds were warning, oh my God, this Barbie video camera might be used for for pedos and, and child pornography. They'll lure kids in. And they sort of used the what about the children kind of angle now, five years later, and whether we're talking about the NSA has all your communications anyway, ah, hell, whatever. Get your kid a doll that spies on them and records all their voices. What, what could possibly go wrong, James? Oh, yeah. What could possibly go wrong? I, I really hope that we don't need to tell our regular viewers uh, and listeners th that you should not buy this uh, doll for your, your boy or girl. It's ridiculous. It's insane. It's not just the corporate surveillance, which is creepy enough and bad enough. And, and you know, they're tr basically trying to sell things back to your kids. But as we know, any data passing through the Internet, especially in the United States, is being tapped by the NSA. It is being cataloged and databased and tracked and surveilled and fed into the sentient world simulation in the bowels of the Pentagon with DARPA. 
creating, you know, fake avatars of actual human beings so that they can predict your behavior and all of the creepy stuff that we know is going on with all of the data passing through the internet. Please do not make your child into uh, just another test subject for the NSA and DARPA and all of these people to get their hands on that data. So uh, obviously, please do not uh, buy this toy or support it in any way. But it is, I hope people understand that when we cover stories like this, it is creating a bigger and bigger picture of what is going on behind the scenes that really is an attempt to capture all of the data about all of us and put it into all of these crazy ideas they have for actually predicting human behavior and all of these uh, different algorithms that they're working on that they need enormous amounts of data to, to harvest. And for pe- I, I think a good article to put that in perspective for people is one that was recently written by John Whitehead called How DNA is Turning Us into a Nation of Suspects. That starts off with a very good encapsulation with a lot of hyperlinks um, talking about the ways that the government can um, know what you read, what you do, what you say. They can uh, predict what you will do. Um, they will soon know what you remember because of brain scanning technologies. Um, all of that creepy Orwellian stuff really is happening right now and now add DNA to that list and it's uh, even more comprehensive the things that uh, that can be found out about you so don't feed your data to them with unthinkingly and please don't support it by buying these types of toys for your children I almost find as all of this kind of progresses James and you even said you know the things you read I I almost now find you know reading a physical book or listening to vinyl records like those sort of simple things now almost feel like a subversive act because they can't be tracked and controlled and databased. Like you guys don't know what book I, I'm reading and plowing through and loving right now. I mean, might spy in some other ways, but in some, you have to sort of look at it and go, okay, this is, it, things have gone too far, and I don't want to continue this for myself. So even if the Barbie story might seem silly and ridiculous, let's tie it in with one other story out of the UK, and our man Luke at We Are Change has the article posted, Scotland Yard Police Chief Wants to Put CCTV in All Homes. Now, that may make it sound like, oh, the fit, they want to put it in the homes. They just want you to do it yourself. The UK's most senior police chief, Sir Bernard Hogan Howe, advocates to have every single home put CCTV surveillance in them to help prevent crime. He also suggested families install the cameras a little lower than they had been at eye level to take advantage of advanced facial recognition technology to help solve crimes. So Orwell's telescreens appear to be coming to life rather rapidly, James. And I think we should probably bring this episode 222 of New World next week to a close. We do want to remind you again, the stories. We don't come up with these all ourselves. Again, it's all about the help from all the people. So whether we're talking about don't fallacy me, bro, or hashtag New World next week, you can submit stories to us, and that's how we help and share and crowdsource and, as they would say at Tragedy and Hope, learn our way forward, James. That's the point, and it is a collaborative effort, so my hat's off to all the people submitting the stories, and my hat's off to you, James, for collaborating and and putting it all together. Three great stories. Looking forward to three more next week. Thank you again for your time. Thanks, man. Take care.